Hi everyone, it's Barry from Jerusalem. This week uh, started the uh, the three weeks. We had a fast day. This fast commemorates the breaking of the external walls of the old city, and within three weeks' time, culminating in the uh, Hebrew day Tisha B'av, which is a day of mourning the temple, a fast day, twenty-four hour, twenty-five hour fast we mourn the return of Jerusalem. So in this week's Parsha we have Pinchas. Pinchas was acting on his own for the sake of the Kavod of Hashem. This concept of Kavod is a very interesting concept because in life many people seek honor but the Torah says those who seek honor will not find honor. Kavod is honor. So what did Pinchas do? Well, they were supposed to go into the camp and cross over the Jordan and they were met by Balak and the Midian and the uh, Moab woman, they came out, they realized they could not fight them with weapons. Because we saw the miracles of, of Egypt and they were terrified. So Balak hired Bilam to curse the Jews. And in the end, God took over his voice and he gave a blessing for Israel. This is the blessing we use when we start the morning prayers. So we have to see the Jewish people are involved with the honor of Hashem. The honor is called kavod or respect. And this is the most important aspect of the tradition. Because without respect, nothing works. It was the lack of respect in which both temples were destroyed on Tisha B'Av, on the last day of the three weeks. So we're approaching Tisha B'Av a little bit more than two weeks, because three weeks is 21 days. And these days are days of cautious behavior, because in Jewish histories, these days have been suffered throughout thousands of years. And this is all due to the fact that Kavod, we're all trying to find our purpose and we have to understand that the Kavod of the Jewish people rests in the Temple Mount. It rests when the Temple was glorious and when they gave the sacrifices. So on Tisha B'Av, they cry, why are we in exile? And we see what's happened to the Jews in exile, even in this century, even in a great country like America. We see the change of mentality. The, the kavod for the Jewish people, many look up to the Jewish people, but many are very hateful of the Jewish people. So this honor, this respect, it's not a logical thing. In the case of Pinchas, the, 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 uh, in the camp, they tr they tried to trick the Jewish people by coming out naked and with their uh, charms of idol worships. And the whole reason why the Jewish people came out of Egypt was to get away from this foolish behavior. They had all different types of gods and they had all different types of acts. And God said, listen, there's a harmonious being in the world that creates a certain sense of justice. And man who seeks kavod for himself, who seeks honor for himself, is missing the point. A perfect example of the man who received the Torah was Moshe Rabbeinu. And he was the most humble, he was the most respectful of all. Because even when his sister 
was speaking to her, his, her, her his brother. Moshe was a prophet. His sister was a prophet. His brother was a prophet. You know, uh, casually saying things that upstairs Hashem doesn't want to hear in our speech anything bad. You speak bad about the Jewish people. You speak bad about the land. You speak bad about your, your family. You speak bad about your friend. You speak bad about your employer. You have politics and you speak bad about presidents, this and that. No, that's not the idea. The idea is, even though you, you, you size people up, we're not judging anybody. God is the ultimate judge. And God will decide the fate of men. The fate of men in each country. The fate of, of Israel. If Israel, if Israel has the merit to survive her ordeal now in this day, which the promise of Yitz, I, uh, Avram, Isaac, and Jacob, it's 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 there. He gives this to us, even though we might not merit, because the unity of mankind is what God seeks, and the unity of the Jewish people has to be has to be one. We are one nation. On Rosh Hashanah, we are one. And we're judged. We're judged easily because we're not judged as... In, we're, individually, we're judged as a group. In other words, how many millions of Jews around the world? There aren't many. 0.2 of uh, 1%. They're all judged like it's one person. That's the whole concept of unity. And there on Rosh Hashanah, that is, that is the great judgment. And on Sukkot, that is the great liberation of our happiness. And on the eighth day of, 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 of Sukkot, on the seventh day, on the eighth day, it's called Shemini Yatzeret, October 7th, the, a judgment that was made in Rosh Hashanah and, and Yom Kippur usually were all forgiven. And even as, there's another time for forgiveness, even on Sukkot. But on Sukkot, we weren't forgiven. We were attacked. We were invaded by our enemies. And the temples were destroyed in the second period because there was a lack of respect between one another. And this is why it has to stop. The political factions, whether it's in America, whether it's in Israel, it has to stop. You have an American president who is old. You have two old presidents, but one's a little bit not coherent as the other one. So he st so he had to step down. We we thank him for his for his service, and we hope we get the right person in that's going to re reunite America. Just the same as in Israel, we're fighting a massive war, but if we have on the left and the right disagreement big disagreement and hatred this cannot be because if it, if it occurs that they, they, the kavod we're all looking each party is looking for their kavod their honor but the honor belongs to Hashem that's the concept of kavod so what was the kavod of Pinchas he realized that he had to go into the land and he saw the head of the Israeli with the head of the uh, of, of, of the uh, of the passing nations that they're going into and they were together and it could very well be that they were influencing the Jewish soldiers that came in and Pinchas went over to Moses and said, what's going on here? Isn't this forbidden? They're involved with idol worship. They come naked with their charms around their necks and wherever, with food and drink. And we have our job to do, to go into the land of Israel. So he took it upon himself he killed both heads of both tribes, 
when they were together. And when he did that, there was a silence in the camp. And there was a tradition that, you know, Shim, 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 Shimson and Levi were very, very difficult, were very, very powerful warriors. And when he did that, and he saw from that tribe someone coming after him. His soul, after his action of killing the two people, expired at, 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 at the fear of his brother coming towards him. Of course, there were 12 nations. I, he wasn't in the, the, I'm not sure if he was in the same tribe, but the bottom line is, he asked Moshe, and Moshe said, take care of it. Because Moshe knew Pinchas was right, and he was rewarded with the priesthood. And that's what we did in the temple when the temple existed 2,000 years ago and 2,500 years ago, the first and second temple. They both were destroyed on Tisha B'Av, on the seventh of Av. Why? Because people didn't act with respect. We have an expression in Hebrew, kol kavod, all the honor. You get called up in the show, you have an honor. But the real Torah person takes a step, step backwards to go up. The minute that a Jew thinks that he's got respect or honor, he's already missing something. He has to be humble like Moses. When God wants you to punish his sister Miriam, and, and he, God said, you have to keep her seven, seven days outside the camp. Because she said something that God didn't like. His respect was, was hurt. But Moses, the greatest Torah scholar, gets on his hands and knees and prays to God. No, let her go. Heal her. He says, Kel Rafana, heal her. In other words, his own sister. He didn't, he didn't have any ego. God didn't like what the, what the woman said. But he didn't care about his ego. He was the main head. He was the main prophet. There's no other prophet other than Moses. And even though there were other prophets, and even though Bilaam had a chance for the non-Jews, for the other nations, to act with kavod, but it was his kavod. It was, it was money. It was the honor of, of Bilak who... Who, who paid him to curse the Jewish people and, and he ended up blessing the Jewish people. And then he ended up getting, getting cut up in a month, later on in many pieces. That was his judgment. It was deferred judgment. So we have to see that when we follow God's ways and we show him the right respect and we show Ben Adam the Havero, man between his fellow man or nations between his fellow, the proper respect, then we have Shalom. And Pinchas' act was called Brit Shalom, the covenant of peace. Well, how can it be that killing someone is a covenant of peace? Well, because they were doing the wrong thing. And when Pinchas took, took it in his hands to stop them both, There was a plague and it stopped. 24,000 people were, were dead. Just like in the times of Rabbi Akiva, 24,000 people died. In the times of Rabbi Shiva Bar Yachai, 24,000 of his students died. And on, on, on Lagba Omer, that was a space in the time of, of between Passover and Shavuot, the giving of the Torah, that later on, uh, they, they, they had a little bit of re release from, from the killing on this time. So, so this is a time of serious self-introspection. We must understand, not 
in the, the ways of the nations, where we think the peace process is a process. It's not a process. It's a way of behavior that sometimes requires very difficult and violent interaction. That's the Brit Shalom. That, this is the Brit Shalom. So we should think about our behaviors and think about before we open ourselves, open our mouths to our friend. How do we say something that we don't like? We have to find a way to say it nicely. Not to, not, or to look after revenge. No, Brit Shalom means Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov, when he left Levan's house after 20 years of, 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 of Levan mistreating him, tricking him, and he had to cross over the land, but he had to go through his brother's Esau, who he had sold his birthright to and wanted to kill him. So what did Yaakov do? He prepared his, his Sechel, his Torah, his understanding, his knowledge of the full knowledge of the Torah because he's he's the concept of Teferet which is the glory or the kavod of the ultimate Jew who understands his purpose in life and tries to pass it on to his children. This is Yaakov Avinu. So how is he's meeting with a, with a killer, with a murderer. How is he going to do it? He figured a way. It's in one of my tapes, I, I, I mentioned this, when he meets his brother Esau, his twin brother. It's, like, it's ironic that the twins are, are, are at war with each other. We're all brothers. And the next Geula, we're in the Geula, we're in this special time where everything is upside down, Hashem is calling the shots, basically. Even the shooting of, of, of President Trump, he's calling the shots. You, you don't think he could have put that, that bullet a millimeter closer to his ear? He's saying to, 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 to the President Trump, okay, you had four years and this guy wasn't doing his job. I want you to leave this country. This country is a dome. This country is Aesop. That's what our tradition says. But Aesop has a chance for tshuva, for repentance. We all have a chance. But the only way we're going to have repentance is if we start becoming kavod, giving kavod to your fellow man. And know that the only kavod that Hashem wants is his, is his kavod. A kavod between man and man, man and his wife. Sure, a man has to show kavod to his wife and a wife has to show kavod to, 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 to the man. That's the whole key to a marriage. Why are there so many divorces? Because people are not having respect for one another. Boker Tov, Kavod, if you learn the Torah, if you see what it's about, you won't open up your mouth to your spouse. You won't open up your mouth to your employer. You won't open up your mouth to your, to your friend. You know what the Torah says? If you're silent when you're getting attacked verbally, you get a big plus in, in, in Shemayim. And you have his protection. So I, I wish everyone a special Shabbos, this Shabbos, Pinchas, this Shabbos. And we should all look and find what it means to be a servant of anything but who we are. A servant to one another. That's the only way that we can develop kavod in this world. And we should see the temple we built and the kavod and the glory of Hashem in His glory when He comes from the heavens, this time for the 70 nations. Because the only purpose of the Jew was to be a light to the nations. But they can't be a light to the nations if they're not a light unto themselves. And we all have a purpose, and that's it. We all have a mission. The Jews have a mission. The non-Jews have a mission. We don't judge. We have to do. If the Jews don't do their, their job, 
they're finished. So we have to try. We have to try to find unity. We have to try to find Brit Shalom, the covenant of peace. This will be our future for the Jews and the 70 nations. Good Shabbos from Jerusalem.